This is supposed to be the ultimate guide to everything Five Nights at Freddy's. The, the lore, the gameplay, the secrets, the everything. Uh, it's supposed to be the all-encompassing guide to all the knowledge you need to have about the series. The problem is, this is the third in a series of these books. Every time it gets more and more updated, it gets bigger and bigger, and with each time, it's there's been problems. Uh, with stuff like fan art being used instead of actual art or models, uh, and misinformation. There's been some questionable stuff in these books. I've got the latest one. The question is, is it any better? We'll cut to the chase. Yes, it is. But there's more to say. Today I would just want to go through uh, this book and tell you what I like, what I don't like, and that way you can know if you should buy it. If you want to know more about the series, or if you even just want a cool guidebook on it, uh, this should be, I think, a pretty good way for you to tell whether this is a good option for you. Now keep in mind, the original book I believe was something like 200 pages, this one is almost 300. So there's been a lot of new content added here, and old content, if I remember correctly, has been changed as well. There's some very interesting lore bits in here too, so let's get right to it. Immediately one thing I want to point out is this book is actually a lot bigger than some of the previous books that this series has gotten. Let me show you. Here we have the latest book in, uh, in Fazbear Frights, and what you'll see uh, is that the, they're actually very different in, in terms of size alone. So that's good because this has a lot of like art from the series, a lot of models and such, uh, which is great because now we can see it in more detail. There's 14 chapters in this book. Uh, there's one, the first, there's some on every game in the series. Uh, the first four, Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, Ultimate Custom Night, FNAF VR, Curse of Dreadbear. Uh, interesting how Curse of Dreadbear gets its, uh, an entire chapter all to itself. Uh, FNAF AR, uh, the original book series, Fazbear Frights. Uh, there's a chapter called the Fazbear Entertainment Archives, and that is basically a chapter where uh, stuff like phone calls from the old games, uh, the tapes from FNAF VR, uh, interesting stuff like that, and, and like recipes and things are documented. Uh, stuff like the blueprints from Sister Location, it's all here, so you can see it uh, anytime you want, it's all documented. And the final chapter is just an inventory on every animatronic in the series, including some that we haven't actually seen designs for yet, so that's interesting. In case you haven't read any of these Freddy files, I will say uh, just the basics of how it works. Uh, for the games, there's usually a section on just gameplay and like strategies and stuff. You can see here for the first game, uh, you have stuff on um, how long it takes to drain power in FNAF 1, which is interesting info, as a map of the pizzeria, which is pretty detailed and tells you a lot about uh, about how it works. It has uh, often a little lore section where it actually tells you uh, a few things about actually like what the lore is and it confirms some things. It has a section on fan theories, it doesn't really usually confirm any of these, uh, but it talks about them at least to get your mind going on them. And that's generally what each chapter on the games at least has. Now what you'll notice is there's a few little details that actually weren't in the previous editions of this book that seems to hint at some things that we, maybe we didn't know until now. Uh, for one, here in FNAF 3's chapter you can see uh, it mentions the Phantomatronics uh, appear burned. Which is an interesting detail because at this point in the timeline, uh, there shouldn't have been any fires, especially not any that involve the main robots of this series. That would happen later, all the fires that happen in this series, of which there are many. So it's an interesting detail that it mentions that these uh, animatronics appear burned. Just little things like that, there's more, but I, I can't remember them all right now. Uh, you, I kind of had to read through the whole thing just to find these little interesting bits of, of information that was changed from the previous version of this book, and you might want to take a look at it too. For all the little uh, mini games throughout the series, there's like very detailed descriptions of each one and how to unlock them, how to find the secrets in them. Really helpful stuff, actually. For games that are more story intensive, like Sister Location, there's literally entire descriptions uh, on the entire game and how it plays out and how to win it, which is actually really cool. So that's all cool and great, but I know you guys are wanting to see the new stuff that this book offers, and I'm going to try and show you all that. Here we have uh, the first new chapter, which is on Help Wanted, which was originally the uh, VR game in the series, and now has been made to a non-VR port as well. Uh, this includes uh, your typical like description of how the game plays out, of what's all in it. Uh, it has really interesting uh, a picture of all of the different prizes you can get. Something I didn't know, but now I do. 
Again, detailed descriptions on the different game modes in Help Wanted. It tells you what's different about FNAF 1 to 3, which they're all included in this game, but they have some differences to the originals, uh, because obviously it's a VR remake. So it tells you like what's different and how to beat these instead of the or actual originals. I will say some of these descriptions of how to, to beat these game modes are literally just like repeating what hand unit tells you in these modes for the parts and services stuff, which if you remember, you're repairing the animatronics and the entire time hand unit is telling you what to do. Uh, this basically has that, but it just it repeats everything hand unit tells you, sometimes word for word. Uh, here for the Bonnie section it says, uh, Bonnie's guitar is out of tune and needs to be recalibrated. To do this, you'll need to access his harmonization module located in his secondary throat pipe. If you go back to FNAF VR, he says almost the exact same thing. He says this. It looks like Bonnie's guitar is out of tune and must be recalibrated. First, we must access his harmonization module located inside his secondary throat pipe. So it's kind of a bit of a lazy way to do it, but I mean, I guess if he gives you the instructions anyway in game, it's not like you really need this guide for that. What's really interesting here is it has a whole map of the pizza party level, which I know it's easy to get lost in because it's it's a big maze-like thing. So this is really handy because it tells you exactly how to get to the end and find all the secrets. An in-depth description of each tape in this game, which kind of reveals the lore. Detailed descriptions on how to get to each and every ending. And a whole page that on how to beat Princess Quest, on how to find all the secrets in that, which is only in the mobile version of the game. So as you can see, this goes really in-depth to basically everything involving even the new uh, games in the franchise. There's an entire section on how to get all the collectible coins in this game. Easter eggs, for instance, did you know that one of the characters from Scott's old games, uh, The Desolate Hope, can actually be found in this game? The Coffee Pot, which is the main character of The Desolate Hope, can be seen uh, in FNAF 3, and also in the prize counter. So that's cool to know. Helpy even will show up occasionally. What's weird here is it actually mentions Showtime in this book. Showtime, in case you didn't know, was a feature in Help Wanted that was never actually added. Uh, it was supposed to be, but I guess Steeple either didn't have time, or I, I believe the official story was Scott didn't like uh, the way it turned out. He didn't think that it really fit the characters uh, and the way that he kind of envisions them. Something I think specifically about Freddy's voice actor didn't seem quite right. Uh, so Showtime was never added, but the button has always still been there. And here it actually mentions all of this. It mentions that uh, it was never actually added into the game, but it, it, it talks about how the song is still in the files. It has a whole script for the song here. It tells you all the achievements in the game. Just, uh, it goes really, really in depth. This book even mentions FNAF World, which Scott himself rarely mentions. Uh, it has it talks about how uh, In Help Wanted, the rogue indie game developer that supposedly made a bunch of games that really tarnished Fazbear, for, uh, Fazbear Entertainment's reputation, one of those indie games might have been FNAF World, which is interesting. First time FNAF World has ever been mentioned uh, in relation to the actual like main series. As I mentioned, there's an entire chapter for Curse of Dreadbear, which, if you don't know, is the, just the DLC. For help wanted it featured a bunch of new levels and some lore and stuff but not much more i wasn't expecting it to get a full chapter here which features much of the same stuff that i just mentioned but for this part of the game there's also an entire chapter on fnaf ar everyone's favorite game in the series uh which features mostly gameplay tips not much in the way of actual lore uh and the lore it does have is about like i don't know the remnant and stuff and the emails uh Mostly the same thing as in the other chapters, but it's this chapter is actually almost entirely gameplay related So if that's your thing, there you go. Here's something interesting We actually uh, have a chapter as I mentioned before on uh, the original book series So this is the silver eyes the twisted ones the fourth closet and the security log book uh, It talks about them talks about their stories what they mean for the rest of the series uh, It even has stuff on like the, the graphic novels talks about things that you can see in those, which is interesting because uh, the final graphic novel actually wasn't out when this Freddy Files came out, so it actually has uh, some spoilers for that graphic novel that uh, we didn't know yet when this book came out, so I guess it kind of spoiled one of the other books for us. It has some cool uh, screenshots from that graphic novel, which you can see here, uh, which otherwise we would not have seen until the book came out, so that's cool. And one of the things I was looking forward to, this has an entire chapter on uh, Fazbear Frights, the newest book series. And uh, it has full color illustrations from all of these stories. I'll show you some of them now.
So for almost like every story in the series, we now have an official illustration for it, uh, which is pretty cool. It also has some interesting stuff on the Stitch Wraith lore, which uh, it connects to FNAF 6, interestingly enough, which is something you might want to pay attention to. There's some cool recipes here that I, I definitely want to make sometime. Uh, stuff like uh, pizza and, and cupcake pizzas and, and a, a, a soda, interestingly enough, uh, which I will want to make sometime, maybe in a video. And this is all in uh, the chapter I mentioned before with uh, the, the Fazbear Entertainment Archives, which has like the entire phone calls from these games. Uh, stuff like the scripts from Sister Location, Blueprint, uh, uh, the legal disclaimer from Help Wanted, the tapes from Help Wanted, the emails with lore from FNAF AR, just a lot of cool stuff that you'll probably want to check out. And an animatronic inventory on most of the characters in the series, including some designs that we actually have never gotten before. Uh, we have Coils the Birthday Clown, who is one of the, the villains in Fazbear Frights. Lucky Boy, another villain from Fazbear Frights. Here's here's a big one. An, our official canon design for Spring Bonnie. Now what's interesting about this is, this looks like a steel wool render to me. This looks like something that steel wool designed, which is interesting because Spring Bonnie isn't in Security Breach, isn't in any of, this, of Steel Wool's games, but it looks like one of their renders from what I can see. So I'm wondering who actually made this model, who rendered it, uh, and why it's here. I mean, it's good that we have a design for him now, uh, 3D-wise, but interesting. Overall, that is uh, basically everything in the book, and if you want to see more, obviously, you're going to have to check it out. Uh, but I think it's definitely an improvement from the the other Freddy files. I think it definitely has more to offer in terms of lore, in terms of just general content. I like the that the Fazbear Entertainment Archives are here. I like that there's an entire character inventory. I like that all the new games and books are involved and it doesn't seem like anything was really excluded. Really cool to see. And I think Security Breach is getting its own entire Freddy file soon, so I can only imagine what's gonna be in there. I would recommend picking this up. I don't know if I'd say to treat it as like your final, uh, guide to the series in everything it probably has some errors still uh, but it's i think i'd say it's worth picking up even as just like a collectible thing i think that's all i want to say thank you guys for watching thank you uh for being curious about this book like i am and i, I guess i'll do something i'll i'll see you see you soon Bye bye <laughs>